Good evening. As Father said, my name is Amy. My husband, Mark, and I have been parishioners at Ascension for about eight years, and we have kids who are 21, 19, 17, and 14. About a month or so ago, I opened an email from Karen in the parish office that said I had been recommended to give this talk. I was shocked. Me? Why would they want me? I know so many people that would be better at it. Once she said, you're who we want, I emailed her back, thanked her, told her I was flattered, but I really didn't think that it was for me. I pressed send on the email, closed my laptop, and went on with my day, which meant tackling a big pile of laundry. While I was folding to keep myself company, I played a Holy Family School of Faith rosary podcast. If you're not familiar, Mike Schurslick, a local Kansas City guy, puts out a rosary podcast every day that's really unique. He doesn't use the traditional mysteries of the rosary, but instead gives truths of the faith or wisdom from a saint. They're listened to by over 30,000 people in 90 countries around the world. They're really good. Anyway, I clicked one at random, since I had missed a few recently, and landed on the one from the Feast of St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Mike began to tell the story of how Mother Teresa was a sister of Laredo in Bengal, India. She was a teacher. But one day, while on a train, she had a mystical experience with Christ. He asked her to do something different. Mike read from her diary. Jesus said to her, come, come, carry me into the holes of the poor. Come be my light. At first, she hesitated because she was already serving him, and she had a stable, safe, and comfortable life as a sister who was a teacher. However, Jesus persisted with words that cut her to the heart. You have come to India for me. The thirst you had for souls brought you so far. Are you afraid to take one more step for your spouse, for me, for souls? Has your generosity grown cold? Am I a second to you? I stopped folding. I felt like God was speaking right to me, answering the thing I had just promised to pray about minutes before. I thought about it, and I thought about all the other times that he's asked me to step outside of my comfort zone. And when I agree, he always surprises me with the results. So I said, okay, Lord, I don't know why you want me, but I'll trust you and I'll do the talk. So here I am. I really don't know why he picked me, but as I've prayed about it, I think it has something to do with how he got me up here. I think he wants you too to listen to his voice and to trust him to step outside of your plans and comfort zone so he can multiply your yes in ways you can't even imagine. Just like he did for Mother Teresa and just like he's done with me many times. What could he be calling you to do here at Ascension? I don't know. There are as many ways to serve him as there are of you. Personally, I found great joy and fulfillment in teaching religious education. Prior to coming to Ascension, our family belonged to another parish, and I began teaching religious ed when our oldest was in first grade because they begged me. They really needed teachers. I felt totally unqualified, but I said yes. And here I am, 16 years later, still teaching at a different parish, no longer having my own children in the program, but choosing to teach both fifth and eighth grade. And that's because I can confidently say that God has really outdone himself in how he's multiplied my efforts. For instance, I don't know why it still surprises me, but it does, when each year, a few weeks into class, I realize how much I truly and deeply delight in each of the students. It's like God is giving me a glimpse into how he feels about us. It's such a gift. You may think I like teaching because I know the content so well. That's not the case. Another blessing is that I have a reason to dive into the treasures of our faith every week. I get to learn so much. Then there's the great friendships that have come from all the catechists and the families I've gotten to know. The greatest honor, though, is when I get to watch a light bulb go on in a child's head 
when they begin to comprehend who God is and in turn who they are created to be. Maybe God's not calling you to be a catechist and maybe he's not calling you to serve anyone else at all. Maybe he's calling you to receive. Maybe he wants to fill you up. Maybe by joining one of the adult faith classes, taking an adoration hour, or joining one of the many groups. Maybe he has growth and new connection in mind for you. I like to tell the kids I teach that if they only remember one thing from being in Mrs. Beamer's class, I hope it's this, that God made them exactly as they are, on purpose, and of any time or any place in all of history, he chose now, 2022, Overland Park, Kansas, and their specific family and this parish. And he went to all of that planning because he's given them a very specific mix of gifts. And he's prepared very specific jobs that they get to help him complete to build up his kingdom so that someday he will bring them home to that heavenly kingdom with him. A few weeks ago, the discussion topic with my eighth grade small group was, is God real? I shared this with them from Chris Stefanik. If there is no author, then there is no story. And you are all part of a big show about nothing. But if there is an author and there is a story, then you're in it. So what is your part in the story? I'll leave you with that question. What is your part in God's plan for ascension? Thank you.